Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're gonna talk about some big changes happening in the mortgage renewal market. That's gonna make it easier on Canadians when renewing mortgages. Also gonna talk about a couple of programs by the BC Provincial Government and the BC Conservatives as we head into this fall's election. Real quick, if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Hassan, I'm a real estate agent in the Vancouver area, and I make educational real estate content to help you on your real estate journey. When I'm not making videos like this, I'm helping people just like you buy and sell real estate across the lower mainland. So if that sounds interesting to you, you wanted to chat with me one-on-one -on -one about your real estate situation, you can book me for a free call in the Calendly link below and on screen and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video. All right guys, hope you had a great week. Gonna jump right into it. Gonna talk about mortgage renewals and a significant change that uh, has just been announced by OSV, Canada's banking regulator, uh, when it comes to mortgage renewals. Um, now, if you followed my channel for a bit, uh, you know a couple of things. Number one, um, the whole host of mortgages set to renew in 2024, the year we're in, but also 2025. Um, this was going to be this big inflection point in the market where people uh, you know, purchased at very low rates. They were in the high ones or in the twos for mortgage rates. And what was gonna happen when all of these mortgage mortgages renew? To give you an idea of the scope of things in 2025, about $350 billion in mortgages set to renew. I believe it, the number was 3.8 or 3.9 million Canadians renewing in 2025. And so this was kind of the talking point about, okay, when we're really going to start to see the pain of these high rates in the market uh, is when buyers start to renew because you know, most buyers were on fixed rates, so they weren't having to uh, go through any sort of pain as the rates increased. Uh, those on variable rate mortgages, yes, for many of them, their payments did increase, uh, but there was also fixed payment variable, and, and they didn't get quite as affected as maybe that adjustable, which is a small segment. So the big, again, talking point was what's going to happen uh, when these rates increase, when renewal happens, and 2025 was the year that was earmarked as when we were going to start to feel this significant pain. And to talk about mortgage rates just in general, uh, about, I want to say a month ago, I did a video talking about how uh, mortgage wars are starting amongst Canadian lenders and, and how, you know, when sales quantity is down, and we got to look right across Canada for this, uh, you know, for example, like, us in Vancouver, yes, we are a significant piece of what happens, but an even larger piece is Ontario in the Toronto area, and we have sales down, at least on new construction product, I believe down 70%. Um, they have been getting uh, hit very hard with you know excess supply of inventory, not a lot of sales, and so when sales are down, mortgages are also down, new mortgage originations, and these lenders are relying on mortgage business. I mean, in Canada, that's, a, that's the largest chunk of business for a lot of these lenders is that residential mortgage business. So when sales come down, um, they're not having you know as many deals come across their desk, and now they're getting more aggressive. And, and one thing I mentioned in that video was I said, look, renewal, when you when you own a business, retaining a customer comes at a much lower cost than acquiring a new one. So, you know, expect them to want to, you know, really secure your renewal business. And so this announcement by Osfi now uh, is making this renewal business a lot more competitive. So they've come out and they said, if you are to renew and if you are to switch lenders at the time of renewal, same amortization period, same mortgage amount, but switching to another lender, that new lender no longer has to apply the stress test on your renewal. So in the past, what would happen is if you were to switch lenders, you could definitely do that, but when they were doing the qualification, they'd have to add that stress test, that 2% on top of your contracted rate, and so it didn't allow them to, to necessarily compete as hard for your renewal business. It was always tougher for that the, the next lender to be able to offer you your renewal. And you know, the, for the existing lender, lack of competition, they were able to just mail out these renewal letters and, and buyers would say, okay, perfect, I just sign right here and away I go, it's, it's easy peasy, but there wasn't, there wasn't competition there. So now what's gonna happen is if you do switch lenders, no stress test gets applied, uh, it essentially levels the playing field 
and it creates more competition now for your renewal business. So now this chunk of business that for the most part, uh, lenders have thought of it kind of as a slam dunk. They were, they were capturing a huge chunk of their renewal business, of course. Um, now that's up in the air. There's going to be a lot more competition for that business. So if you're someone who is renewing a mortgage anytime soon in 2025, make sure to shop around. Make sure your lender knows that you are looking at other lenders. Don't sign the first offer that gets mailed out to you. Um, this is going to work in the favor of Canadians that are renewing mortgages. Mortgage rates in general uh, have come down you know, quite significantly just to circle back to the whole inflection point and how, you know, we were thinking, you know, people in there in the two percentiles would be jumping into the fives. It wasn't that long ago that, you know, a five year fixed rate was in the fives, the mid fives. And where we sit today, uh, I've seen five year now uh, fixed rates with a three in front of them. Um, I just had a client get a three year uh, uninsured mortgage at 4.09 from an A lender. So these mortgage wards, they they are we're in the midst of it right now. The mortgage rates are coming down. The fixed rates. It's looking more and more like we're going to see people at renewal time shifting out of the two percent, somewhere in the twos, into somewhere in the threes. Now that's of course it's still significant. But you know what people were talking about is this being this big impact in the market, people jumping from low twos to mid fives. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Uh, if you followed my channel for any amount of time, you know I've spoken very often, very frequently that come renewal time, come 2024, 2025, the Canadian government, the lenders, uh, everyone is going to try and make it as easy as possible on homeowners to renew the mortgage, to keep the payments uh, more palatable. Um, we see that with 30-year amortizations and you know the, the Canadian Mortgage Charter, which again is not a legislation, but it was the federal government saying to the lenders, look, if you need to extend amortizations to make it easier on your homeowners, we, we're asking you to do that. So you know, all of these different cogs, all of these different pieces, you know, trying to assist the homeowner to make it easier. And I've always said that, yes, it's it's tough. Uh, when the mortgage payment goes up, it's, it's incredibly difficult. But the last area where people are going to jump out of their mortgage and, you know, go into a rental or anything along those lines, they will cut back in every other area uh, before having having to do that. And it's now just looking like, you know, with the way the economy is going with the way interest rates are going. It's not a positive conversation from the sense of, you know, our economy and growth is our country moving forward in the right direction. It's clearly not. Uh, we're at risk of deflation now. Um, from a payment perspective, though, it's looking like it's going to be a lot easier than people had thought. We have a Bank of Canada rate announcement again in October, and it's not a question of is the Bank of Canada going to cut rates. The question is, are they going to do a 50 basis point cut? And I would say at this point, uh, the signs are leading strongly that it's going to be a 50 basis point cut. Now, the thing to keep in mind with the mortgage rates, I've been talking to a lot of clients, is the, the fixed rates don't fall in line with what the Bank of Canada is doing with their key rate. The fixed mortgage rate is forward looking. So a lot of the, um, I don't want to say positivity because that's not the right word, but you know, with rates coming down, it's because um, the economists are already seeing that the rates are going to come down by the Bank of Canada. And so we are, we are forward with the fixed rates. So it's not as if we'll see a cut of 50 basis points and the next day, you know, fixed rates are going to come down. Now, we, this is all priced in. It's kind of like the stock market. You buy a stock based on what it's going to do in the future on, on an expectation. And that's how, the, that's how the fixed rates are as well. So we're starting to see that aggressiveness. Again, Osby comes out and says, look, let's make this more competitive. Let's make it easier on Canadians to shop around, to get a lower payment, get a better payment. Um, I, I should mention this is for uh, uninsured mortgages, this OSV change. Uh, so 20% down or more. Um, but uh, something that's going to make it, again, easier on, on Canadians when it comes to renewal time. So I want to switch gears now and talk a little bit about what's happening with the uh, provincial government on the housing side and on the BC Conservative 
conservative side with the housing side as well as we move into a fall election here. Uh, this won't be too deep of a dive, but there's specifically what I want to talk about is on the uh, BC provincial government side. They just announced a new uh, program. They're calling it the Affordable Housing Initiative. Um, and this Affordable Housing Initiative, how it's going to work um, they're going to use it, they're going to apply it to up to 25,000 new homes across the province and basically how it's going to work and, and they, they kind of released some of this program previously in the sense that they've identified uh, low cost lands is how they're, how they're calling it and this is land that's either owned by the province already, owned by government, uh, owned by First Nations, um, and essentially partnering up with these groups to uh, create new housing, new leasehold housing. And what that means is rather than have a freehold ownership in that property where, you know, a lot of people don't realize you buy into a condo, a freehold condo, you actually do own a portion of that land that the condo sits on. Now, it's a fractional portion, of course, but you own some of it. Now, how this affordable housing initiative works is it'll be leasehold ha land, meaning anyone that purchases in, you don't own any portion of that land. It's a very long-term lease. I think in most cases, these are gonna be 99-year leases. And how this program is gonna work is if you meet the list of qualification, there are uh, you know, income requirements, you can't be above a certain threshold, et cetera. Um, you can essentially purchase into these projects being responsible for 60% of the market value of the property and market value will be derived by the government and whoever the, the land partner is. I imagine they'll be the ones setting this market value and so you as a buyer, you're responsible for 60% of it. 40% of it would be financed by the government. So they're giving you financing for 40% of the value. Their name essentially would go as a charge holder on the title of property. And then how it works, you know, so you're getting a reduced price on this leasehold property. And then how it works, if you're to sell that property, uh, depending on when you were to sell that property, you would have to give appreciation back and pay back the loan to the government. So the largest tier is, I believe, between four and 25 years, uh, where if you're to sell within that period, you pay back that 40%, and 40% of the market appreciation at that time also goes to the government. Now, if you don't sell, if you, if you get accepted into the program, you purchase one of these units, and you remain in it for 25 years, at 25 years, you then have to pay that loan back in full for 40% of that market value. So I, I hope you followed along in that process, but essentially what it is, if I were to summarize it, is you know purchasing in on a leasehold property where you don't own any rights to the land and becoming uh, almost a sort of partner with the provincial government in uh, purchasing these units. Now, things to consider about leasehold land is they don't appreciate at the same rate uh, as, as a freehold property would. Um, in a slower market, generally what I see is freeholds, they just don't transact as frequently uh, as a freehold property. Most buyers are trying to get that freehold, get the, the, the largest amount of rights to ownership is a freehold property, so they're, they're seeking freehold. Um, as you move through time, as you move through time in that lease, if it's a 99-year lease or it's a 50-year lease, whatever it is, as you move through time, you can imagine as you move towards the end of the lease, there's more uncertainty and that has effects on value as well. But I wanted to mention this as you know, something a little bit different. And on my channel, I've spoken many times about how um, you know, the focus is on building rental housing now, how governments, they don't really care if you uh, outright own your own home. They don't want people on the streets, but they can't, they can't, you know, worry too much about you owning your own home versus having a roof over your head. And so this, this is almost a middle ground. This is almost, I don't want to say glorified renting, but this is basically setting a midpoint between, you know, a pure rental and outright freehold ownership of a property. This is kind of you know, in the middle there. Um, I did a few short uh, short videos on this. I posted on my other social media channels because I wanted to really understand the feedback from, from people about a program like this. And so asking you as well, if you have thoughts on this program, uh, please do comment them below. But the feedback that I received, uh, quite mixed. I was 80% were saying, no, this is not something that, you know, I would ever, you know, take part in. I want freehold ownership. I want 
you know, the right, as, ma as many rights to that property as I can. I don't want to get into a partnership with the government, but there's a segment of the population looking at it saying, hey, this is an opportunity that I wouldn't necessarily have otherwise. And so I'm, uh, you know, I'm open to this. This is something that I would look at depending on what that market value is. And that's something that's important to, to look at as well. I think with the Heatherlands, which is, uh, you know, the first project that will be uh, under this affordable housing initiative, I think they valued the one bedroom, the 60% share at 510,000. So is that truly market value? Is it not? I mean, that's up in the air to decide. I think maybe it's a little bit on the high side, but just a, uh, an interesting, a unique concept we knew was coming. They've been talking about identifying low cost lands for a while. Um, and this is kind of the start of it. The Heatherlands project to start and now rolling this out for 25,000 new homes. Now I want to flip over to the BC Conservatives. I know there are more than two parties, but um, you know, the two front runners and, and their angle is very different. The the Conservatives are, they just announced Rustad's rebate, housing rebate. And the way uh, they're launching this rebate is they're basically allowing renters and homeowners to write off on their taxes. And so you would get a tax credit over a period of years, it would scale up. Uh, to the point where you could write off $3,000 per month in the final year, I believe it's year four, $3,000 per month uh, against your provincial taxes uh, for housing expenses, mortgage, interest, rent, whatever it might be. And so, and this puts money directly back in, um, you know, the majority, I would say the majority of uh, people in BC. So it's a, it's a different program. Whereas, you know, on the provincial government that's currently in place, it's, it's very particular about who is going to be able to take advantage of, of this incentive of this program. And then on the, on the BC conservative side, it's, you know, let's, let's try and help as many people as possible, both renters, uh, and people that own, own real estate. And I think, you know, it's, it's refreshing to see a policy where, Let's try and help as many people as possible. Let's not segment it. Let's let's try and help, you know, you know, renters and homeowners can be helped through a, a similar through through the same program. It doesn't always have to be one side versus the other. And you know, over the last year or two, I think we've seen a lot of this, you know, renters versus homeowners versus landlords versus tenants. There's been a lot of back and forth. And so on the conservative side, again, just a pure, uh, uh, again, a Rustad rebate, a, a ta tax credit. Um, so, you know, $3,000 a month being able to, to write that off uh, in that, I believe it's the fourth or the fifth year. This would launch in 2026. Um, that's a, it, it's significant. Um, they're, they're touting it one of the largest tax breaks uh, for the middle class. Uh, that we've had in BC. So that's that's an angle that the Conservatives are taking on the provincial government side who are currently in place, more of a partnership. Let's get you into, uh, into home ownership, a, a different style of home ownership, but let's partner together to get a certain segment of the population uh, into that home ownership. So two very different, uh, two very different programs, but I'll probably dive into them deeper in a future video. I would like to quickly say before I end this video, make sure you go and vote this year. I, I truly think this is one of the most significant uh, elections, provincial elections we're having, at least in, in my lifetime. Um, and it's, it's neck and neck right now. So whatever your vote is, don't think that it doesn't matter. It absolutely does. If you ask me, even seven, eight years ago, was I someone who, you know, voted all the time? No, I thought that my voice didn't matter. I would have an opinion. I wouldn't even go out and vote. But, you know, I think there's more at stake. So just get your voice out there. Let me know in the comments what you think of either program, the Rustad rebate or the affordable housing initiative. If you have any questions on mortgages, you can let me know in the comments as well. Uh, but I want to thank you for watching this week's video again. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Uh, what that does is it takes the video and it sends it out to more people so they can also learn from it. And if you like weekly real estate content, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss next week's video. And lastly, again, if you're in the Vancouver area, Fraser Valley, you want to chat with me about your real estate situation, you can book me for a free call or you can just give me a call, send me a text, shoot me an email, whatever you like to do. All my contact info is in the description box. But I want to thank you again for watching this week's video and I look forward to seeing you next week.